Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. I'm Dominic Platner, the ITTF High Performance Manager, and I'm very delighted to warmly welcome all of you to our 46th ITTF High Performance and Development webinar with the topic Best Practices of Table Tennis Training Centers. And we decided to cover the topic of today because we would like to show you how to build up and what is needed to be a successful training center. Honestly, to build up a structure is in many cases not the most difficult task. The even harder one is to be and to optimize the processes and existing structures. And we are looking forward to hear how these two training centers, its representatives and the staff make it happen. But before going over to the introduction of our panelists uh, of today, I want to talk briefly about our webinar code of the Q&A. To all the attendees, please leave your questions in the Q&A section, and our panelists will try to answer as many as possible later on in the question and answer part of the webinar. Thank you very much for taking care of this. And now it's time for the presentation and introduction of our panelists of today. And it's a great pleasure and honor for us to warmly welcome two great responsibles from the two famous German training centers. I would like to start with Andreas Preuss uh, from Germany, who is the manager of Borussia Düsseldorf. Hello and welcome, Andreas. Hello, welcome to everybody. Thank you very much, Andreas. And now over to Ochsenhausen. Uh, Christian Pelinovic from Croatia is the CEO of the Lipa Masters College in Ochsenhausen the managing partner of the Leistungszentrum Ochsenhausen and, last but not least, the president of TTF Lieber Ochsenhausen. Hello and welcome, Christian. Hi, Dominic. Thanks for the introduction. And, yeah, hello back from my side. Thank you very much, Andreas and Christian, for taking the time. And last but not least, I want to warmly welcome my dear colleague, our ITTF High Performance and Massimo Costantini. So pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you to kick off our interaction with Christian and Andreas after your welcoming words. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Andreas and Christian, for taking the time uh, to be with us today for this topic. Welcome to all the attendees uh, to this 46, 46 webinars since we started that almost Every week we have done the unbelievable, unbelievable, good performance, high performance, I would say, in this case. Um, so I would, yes, I would um, kick off this uh, this uh, chat with uh, these two great uh, uh, personalities representing uh, two uh, table tennis centers, uh, where obviously you 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 don't improve your table tennis in the basement, you don't improve your table tennis. By chance, it requires uh, some uh, some sort of a pathway and uh, the structure, the, the the center, the table tennis center is the is the place where you have to you can have the the last let's say the last jump to succeed uh, uh, whether you are you know improving and developing or uh, or uh, also to uh, perform at the highest level in the league and in the European in the Europe and in the world. So we, um, I want to start with Andreas and then uh, followed by uh, Christian uh, regarding the, the the situation of uh, of course you know that the COVID uh, uh, affected all of us. Uh, we have heard so many uh, opinions and uh, and feeling from players and coaches, but actually from the, the the responsible from the training centers we haven't heard. So we don't know how was the feeling how. How affected the COVID uh, did in your uh, in your uh, uh, daily uh, work? So, Andreas, can you share with us some uh, some uh, some uh, feelings regarding this, and then Christian can also can also interact with that. Yeah, I, I can start. Uh, first of all, my most important things up to now, uh, we were very lucky. Uh, all of the players and the coaches and the employees. Uh, are healthy. We had only one corona case uh, from our employees, uh, but or two, but it, it was no strong and from the players, uh, no only around uh, some clubs, but not in the center. Um, 
Most important um, from the second point, uh, okay, last year we had a really lockdown also here in the middle of March from one day to another. We were closed by the, by the government and uh, we were closed for around about four or five weeks. After some three weeks, uh, the professional players could play in the beginning Dima, two players in one hall played table tennis. But then uh, after one week came one coach then was allowed, then there were four players, and like this it went on, and then we had like end of May, we had a, something like restart. We were the first, I think in table tennis, nearly the first who started to play again with the Whistle of Masters, the tournament series um, last year, which was played until August for the professionals, because they had no chances to, to, to play competitions. Um, this year, last Sunday, we started it again with uh, this love masters. Uh, yeah, but we had we had we had a hard time. Uh, it was closed um, around about two months. Then we had a quite good summer. But since end of October, we are now closed for normal people again. Uh, we are only we are only open for the professionals uh and for the big talents from the german failure table tennis association and from the west german table tennis association but we have no table tennis school we have no hotel guests we have no table player table tennis players our amateurs our they are close they're not allowed to play and our hotel is the um, main time nearly empty so we from october on we had like in germany we call it kurzarbeit so the, the people I only work here around uh, from four to eight hours a week. Our employees, um, maybe me and one, one, one or two other guys, different. Uh, we like, like, like we manage uh, everything, but, but most of them they are not in work. Um, okay, we have in Germany we have a good situation that they get money from the government paid, but. Uh, I think this is now for six months again, and last year it was for two months, so it's eight months. This is the um, yeah, big problem for the people working here. And it looks like that we are on the third wave yeah, in Corona in Germany, and that will take until in the summer when maybe we have vaccination and like this uh, going on, like everywhere in Europe. Um, so we had a quite hard time. We were lucky in between, we had this masters, uh, we were also lucky um, that, we put, that we got the chance to make the Champions League bubble in Düsseldorf quite successfully. Finally, we win this tournament also. This was very important for the club. But it was also important that 15 clubs in Europe could come together with the test strategy and so that it was possible to have this Champions League. It was a big honor for us to, to do something in that time. So up to now, with help from the government, we are quite okay. Center, but the longer the time goes, I think 2021 will be more tough. And I also expect that 2022 will still be tough because after this health crisis will come economic crisis, very big one, and this will not be so good. I, I see, I see. Well, very challenging, and uh, the challenge uh, is not uh, is not finished yet. How about you, Christian? Okay, I mean it's similar. It's a similar picture what Andreas already now uh, showed up. It is uh, we are not that far away from each other. So in Germany there is still let's say the same, almost the same laws so same restrictions. And of course, beside that, we also had to. I would say we had to redefine ourselves always and new uh, each week. Uh, there is a kind of uh, reinvention still. And um, I always say the keyword was digitalization, and we tried um, to to make big steps in that direction because our let's say our challenge was to how to reach our players and coaches who were not uh, who were not that time at Oxenhausen, so how to help them uh, during the lockdown period and uh, with all these restrictions, and still we have them. And this was a really uh, tough period, and still it's not done. Still we are into it. And but uh, I think um, we did big steps and big inventions in what I've mentioned right now, so that we could, as I said, redefine ourselves. But um, yeah, we are still on. We have to create a long-term vision. That's that's the fact. And with the long-term vision, also a mission and ambition. 
So we are on, on the way and uh, I think we should think all positive and make the best out of it. And as Andreas has his, let's say, key points and successes in on, on their side, we also try to create our successes on our side. And yeah, let's go forward and do the best out of it. Great, great, great. Yeah, we will come to know more about the, the, the vision, mission and uh, the objective of uh, what you have in mind. Uh, so I will uh, pass the, the, the ball to, uh, to Dominic for uh, your question, Dominic. Thank you very much. And I will pass immediately the ball to Christian with my question. Uh, Christian, I mean, both of your training centers, they are very successful but they have totally different approaches. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit more about your concept in, in Ochsenhausen? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Dominic. Um, okay, our goal was always to become Europe's best independent uh, training center uh, of table tennis. And um, independent, it, it means we, we don't need to follow any kind of, um, let's say, um, goals of the of the association or of the federation so we were looking really for talented guys for talented players uh, if i could use the words from uh, from my former colleague Rainer, he always said it doesn't matter where he's coming from the guy if he's really uh, from north pole or even a penguin doesn't matter let's take him if he can touch the ball in the right way so if he's talented let's take him on board so we created our own concept which is called STAP, it's about um, um, scouting, testing, educating and protecting and this is what we are living for every day, each day, each hour, each minute and yes, along that um, our aim was always also to develop and rank the talented young players uh, among the top 10 in the world. This is our, let's say, our big ambition and our big goal and our big vision and therefore we created, let's say, our team and all, all the things we need for and of course we are very lucky that there is a club besides this project which is called as you already mentioned TTF Lieberoxenhausen where the talented players can join of course the first team and of course can gain the experience they need for their development for the future so that's basically let's say our um, system we've created here uh, with our partners on the side who are following, let's say, this kind of long-term idea. And it's not that easy, but okay, if it would be easy, everybody would do that. So let's do it. And I hope we did it until now in the right way. I pass the ball much. back to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, that was a good backend, good backend, uh, Christian. You I don't think that? so, but thank you much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christian, for this uh, quick uh, insights into your great and, uh, yeah, um, you know, like uh, I would say also unique, unique uh, concept and, uh, yeah, keep doing your, your good work. And, uh, yeah, now I would like to pass the ball to Düsseldorf, uh, to Andreas. Andreas, can you give us some insights into your concept of uh, Düsseldorf? Yeah. Uh, first of all, we don't take penguins from nowhere in the world, um, like like Hester never and say never. Uh, but you know, I really respect for the, for the concept of work what is in Oxenhausen has been done. All the time when Rainer Ile, we were close, and I followed uh, every step. And uh, this is a very in, in yeah. Um, um, Interesting step to make it more private, uh, like them and independent. In here in Düsseldorf, it was always the heart of everything. Was uh, finally the club Borussia Düsseldorf. We were always there. We are more than six years on the market. Six years ago, we we took our title together with Hans Wilhelm Gerd, uh, who's still living and also a little bit helping in the club and in the federation. And it was um, always in the 70s and 80s. That was a when Roskop Fetzner, first of all, Mosik Nolt and Roskop Fetzner came to the to the market, um, it was close to, to the Federation. And we had then this idea, here in Düsseldorf, everything worked um, together with, um, Nash, with Germany, 
with the North Rhine-Westphalia, the area here. So you need the country, you need the government of, of Germany, and you need the town um, to do something and to build something. So we are, or we were always dependent on money from others. We are and were dependent on working together, very close together. This word here is not my work or, or two people. Uh, it's a work of a team together with the Federation, the German Table Tennis Association, the West German Table Tennis Association, the, the Paralympics Association, uh, we were very close, and with the town in Düsseldorf, because it was always history. The town said, um, yeah, we have to help, we give him some money, and this has some advantages and disadvantages. And Düsseldorf is bigger from, from the volume, yeah, what was built here, but it's also, and, and the government takes some money and helps, yeah, but it's also dependent on something. And uh, second different difference is it's more German table tennis center, yeah. So when we look, we, together with the German Tables Association, with Jörg Roskopf and Richard Paul and Helmut Hampel before, uh, yeah, we are looking for German talents and want to improve them. Uh, in Borussia, we have a mix. We have German players. Uh, in history, you always wanted to develop also a German player, but we have also international players, like now Anton Kelberg, Carlson, or before Perston, and, and many, many, many players who played here in Düsseldorf. But it was always the heart of the club was a German player. It was Roskopf, it was Petzner, it was Hüss, Offshore played here. Uh, yeah, so this is different. This is it's in main a German table tennis uh, center with international practice partners. So this is, I think, the main difference between our concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Andreas. And uh, yeah, it's very great and interesting, you know. And and thank you for your both of you for your very great and interesting insights and 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 it's great great to see that there are more ways to reach uh, the goal to become a successful training center and as i mentioned before to christian keep doing your great and good work both of you and now it's time to pass the ball back to massimo to italy yeah thanks from it uh, from uh, from uh, italy this beautiful country, but looks that uh, Germany is leading in this uh, training center. I want to know how, well, uh, Andreas already uh, said something, how everything started, but uh, uh, because, I mean, Dusseldorf, Borussia Dusseldorf, uh, Ochsenhausen, they are not born yesterday, so uh, must have been uh, some process. So uh, how everything started? What was the, the initial the initial spark, let's say, uh, how maybe we can start from Christian. Christian, how everything started? And then the second question, I would say, how many tables you have over there? Okay, uh, it started with an idea. The idea was born when um, Rainer, as I said, my former colleague and the former the president of the club, he met uh, one guy, uh, he's very well known in the table tennis industry, it is uh, Dr. Georg Niklas. And they were talking, uh, really they met on the street, it was not even at the table tennis event. They met each other and they looked at each other and they say, I know you. And the other guy said also, I know you, but I don't know from where. So they met each other since years over years during all the table tennis events but never talked to each other. And that was the time when they, you know, started to talk to each other and then they introduced themselves. So, and then uh, Georg asked Ryan, okay, what is your, let's say, what is your driving link? What you would like to achieve for, for, your, for, your, for the future? And uh, Ryan said that time, he would like to shorten the gap between Asia and Europe in table tennis, because Asia, especially of course, China, uh, is doing a tremendous job and they're really so far away from from Europe and still it's a real hard and long way to go to reach them and to catch them. And this was, let's say, Rainer's vision that time when he said, I would like to, to shorten that kind of gap somehow. I don't know how, but I would like to. And uh, that time also Georg said, okay, but I have the same dream, let's say, because somehow it is getting not don't misunderstand me but it is getting also boring if only the chinese are getting all the championships and and it's getting really 
let's say, a bit dry, the Germans would say. And so the idea was born that time. And then, of course, we started, let's say, uh, I think it was 2009 when they met each other. And one and a half years later, uh, the operation started. So it was a long-term mission. Still, it's not, nothing is done. We, we did some good jobs, I would say, uh, with uh, creating uh, guys like um, Hugo Calderano or Simon Gozzi and reach them into the top 10 in the world. So something was done. Still, there are some other players uh, who everybody knows. But at the end, I would say still the job is not done. Still, there is a lot to do. And so this was, let's say, the, the, yeah, the, the coin where every, things started with this idea and so we followed and created the kind of structure until now and still we are building it still nothing as i said is done and yeah just to answer to the technical part you you you've asked me in our center it is just only 8 to 12 tables i guess we can put in there so everything was based on on really the quality nothing to reach a, uh, a big quantity that was never our goal our mission and our really um, wish is the quality to to make it happen and uh, never the less will come we want to make it and so we focus on the tables and the players we can reach in these circumstances so yeah that's that's mainly basically what i can tell you Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, well, I remember I've been there in the initial stage uh, when I met also Rainer uh, over there, mm. and uh, I know a little bit about uh, about that. Thank you very much for your uh, for your answer. So, Andreas, you said that uh, it was, uh, you know, some sort of uh, uh, needs from the federation, federation or, and, uh, and, uh, and the club, so you decided to, to go together in making this one. So, that was uh, uh, because uh, um, uh, Rossi and uh, Speedy were there with the, their great results. Of of the was an ad, uh, the idea behind uh, what the, was the initial initial uh, uh, idea to 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 think in big. Yeah, <laughs> this uh, story goes a little bit more far behind. I have a little bit more gray hair than Christian. Um, I, when I played in Düsseldorf, in, I played in the first team. It was a big honor for me in uh, the 80s, and we were sometimes champion. And it was the, the, the time when Rossi and Speedy came to Düsseldorf, and they developed. We were the first in 86 with Mario Amesic um, to have an own coach, a professional coach. Uh, but the situation in Düsseldorf was we were quite successful. It, we were, it was a, a great club, uh, but we had had no hall. We had three different halls. We had no professional structure. We had nearly nothing, yeah? Although we were quite successful. And then uh, I think the, it was born in 89. Um, it was like this, that in the night when Rossi and Speedy uh, became world champion in double, uh, we were drinking a lot after this tournament uh, together with Wilfried Mika. Also, Ralf Hosek and some others from the German Table Association were there. And then Wilfried Nicke said to me in the morning, uh, uh, I want to finish, I want to go out of the club and we'll do more for Schüller Micke. Uh, you have to you have to now to do it. Uh, you have to finish playing, you have to do it. I give you all my power behind. I help you. We build up a team, we build up a structure, and we need to do something for Rossi and Speedy. So we need a home, we need possibilities, we want to make them help big. And then, yeah, we started to build something together with Wilfried and, and others. And this was, I think, the, it was born the idea to, to, we need a hall, we need a place for Rossi Speedy. And we, then, we spoke to the government, to the um, German government, uh, and we were lucky. It was because Germany and East Germany and West Germany were coming together in 1989. And in 1990, they were not clear that it cost a lot of money. There was still some money for sport, and so we wanted, they wanted to do something. Uh, they were world champions. And then the government said, OK, we will help you to build a hall. Uh, and then we built this hall together with uh, the government and the, the area and the town, and we give money like club and we built the hall this is the first center this Arak center court would be now the first hall this is our in our ownership it was 1994 it was ready 
And then we began to make, together with the German Table Tennis Association, like to have some uh, camps and uh, yeah, we have our matches there. We got a home to develop. From there, we developed this structure, what we have now, because then after some period, the hall was full because there were camps, there was, uh, we had talents, uh, the hall was full. We have, we asked them, no, we must need, we need the next hall. Uh, and the next hall we must develop. And then it, it was a good chance, the next big step um, is further to, to what we have today. It was in 2005, it was the German Table Tennis Association was with this internat in Heidelberg. Uh, but it was not, yeah, Heidelberg was fine, but it, there was no club in behind. There were no practice partners. Uh, they were working very hard. Martin Ostermann is also there. We were working very hard there with some camps and help. If Ayela, they, they did a lot, they tried a lot, but in, uh, finally they were not uh, Roscoe Fechner were in Dusseldorf, yeah, all, all these uh, times. And they wanted, there was a chance to speak with, uh, with Dusseldorf, with the town, because somebody had to pay this also, also the, the running costs. And there was a political movement with Hans Wilhelm Gap to, to transfer many things from Heidelberg to Dusseldorf. And then we make the next big step, that is with the town and the government, they build all this building, what we have done now. In 2017, there was another hall for handicapped people and for many, many things. And up to now, we have built here yeah, for 16, 17 million euro, uh, the table tennis center with many, with three halls and many facilities. So that was a development. It was close to the club. It was close to Roscoe Petzner and to, yeah, to make our sport um, Professional, more professional, because it was amateur sport in the 80s. Uh, many, many things were like, like amateur, and in the 90s it was professional. But I think the World Championship and the movement after, because we had a movement for okay. players and for, for passion, we had a movement in all Europe uh, with Roscoff, with Safe, with Gatien, Waldner, later Persson. They were great players from Europe, and on the 90s were great years for Europe, and many, many things developed. Yeah? And there also this lot developed. And in uh, this center now we have three halls, so we can put more than 50 tables uh, if we want. In the professional practice, I think we we would normally three times 16 tables or 14 tables, depends on whether Dima is practicing or, or whether the young talent is practicing, we don't need so much place. So, so between 40 and 50 tables, all in all. I see, and it gets bigger and bigger, as you said. You know, initially was uh, was uh, was uh, oh, a center, and then a bigger, and then needs coming and make a bigger, bigger. And I have to say, I have to confirm how high professional uh, quality are there. I mean, I've been there uh, several times, so I know uh, how everything works uh, in a very, very professional way. So, congratulations from my side. And good to know all these stories uh, behind. Uh, return the ball to Dominic again. Thank you. And I would like uh, to, to stay with Andreas. And we are all aware of how successful your, your both of your training centers are. Um, and we would like to know, Andreas, uh, how does an usual training week in the times without the COVID restrictions, I mean, look like? Yeah, you are, first I must explain there are different partners. So, so there is on the one side we have an internat um, with now 11, 12 pupils. They are living in Düsseldorf. They come from all Germany and they go to school in Düsseldorf. They sleep and eat here and like this, and then they, they try to make their exam uh, in the time when they are here. And they practice normally two or three times a day. They start morning practice at 7 o'clock with their coaches, uh, then go to school, uh, lunch, make, make uh, homework, and then after they practice again, maybe two times. Yeah. So from Monday to Thursday, they practice a lot. This internet is open now seven days a week. Uh, this is in the, in the leading of the German Table Tennis Association, not paid, sorry, but in the leading they have the teachers and the, the coaches um, uh, who are taking care of, of these guys. Um, then we have the, the, the top team, so this is the, the group of, of, of Roskopf and Shayong and Lars Hinscher, they are practicing with them. Uh, they are normally practicing two times a day in a normal, in a normal week. Uh, in the weekends they play uh, competitions. Um, 
the, 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 the talents from the West German Table Tennis Association, they are here four times a week at the afternoon, practicing together also with internate and like this. Then we have our club. We have more than 100 children in the club, practiced by between six and 12 coaches. Um, they are practicing every day, um, Monday to Friday, one time a day. And we have the handicapped people, wheelchair. Uh, they are. They have also the point here, the, the Bundesstützpunkt, we call it, um, with two coaches, uh, Schmidtberger and Bauer. And then, then they also practice in time every day, sometimes twice a day. Uh, and parallel in non-COVID times, okay, we have camps. Yeah. So it can be that we have a normal practice when Dimitri or Dan or Kelberg or whoever is uh, Walter is practicing, and we have a camp from the young national team. So we have a lot of camps because you can sleep here. We have like a hotel, yeah, and you can sleep and have camps um, from from the West German Table Tennis Association and from the German Table Tennis Association, but also from international inter uh, associations. This is going parallel. So we have something like. Uh, every day, all year long, there are also Sundays practice possibility, and uh, we have these camps from the federation. Because finally, it was paid. The building was paid by the government of Germany, the government of North Rhine-Westphalia, this big area here, and and the town, and main of the following cost. Because we are not earning money. It's not. Uh, it, we we are something like um, a, a company, but we. It, too much money to be paid, so we need help from outside uh, for the buildings and for everything is paid by by the town. Only the cost in the in the hall in the other center court, the old hall which was built 1994, this is uh, in the ownership of the club, and the club pays all following costs also. So also coming back to Christian, this is a big difference. On the one side, I know how hard it is, and therefore I have a lot of respect what uh, he. House is doing. If you do it all alone, okay, you can make money or not make money. Yeah, because when the roof is over or empty or has a, has a hole, you must um, repair it. And it costs a lot of money. Here in Düsseldorf, there is some of this part is in the ownership of the town, and we are only managing it for the town that it's that it's working. And this is different. So our risk. Here in the management is not so big. So now we have a big crisis, COVID crisis, uh, and then it's important to, that the government is helping us because they are paying off the following costs. It's very, Good. very, very important. Good. Okay. Thank you. And it seems that it's really a demanding and, and difficult task to, to manage this center. And uh, yeah. Congratulations for this. And now over to Christian. Christian, how does an usual Training week in your center look like, and I mean in your center, as uh, as uh, Andreas already mentioned, it's for sure a little bit different. Also, you have the players of your club uh, usually all the time there. So, yeah, how many players are currently there, and and how does it look like? Ah, uh, thanks, uh, Dominic. One more time. Um, um, yeah, first of all, <laughs> uh, thanks, Andreas, for 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 your kind words. But in the same time, I respect also your work because the bigger it gets, the more work is there. So nothing to say. At the end, it's the same uh, if if you want to compare it. So yeah, um, right now we have approx um, 12 guys here. So as you can see, still as I mentioned in in the beginning, uh, it's a small group. Um, but again, it's more um, focused on the quality. Of the work and on the quality of the guys who, who want to to yeah to step up. So basically, you can say we can use it 24/7. So it means we are very flexible in a way, but of course we have a standard um, procedure like everywhere on the world and at any place. So in general, we starting uh, from eight o'clock in the morning, 8:30. And the coaches open up the, the center and you can use, you can come for, let's say, a kind of optional service, warm up. And then normally the practice starts from 9, 9.30, approx that time until uh, lunchtime. Then lunchtime, as you can see, is normally for everybody 12, 12.30. 
and uh, the rest until 3.30, and then it goes again from 4 o'clock until the evening, then sometimes one session from six, uh, from 4 to 7, and the second session um, until the real evening, so uh, approximately 9 o'clock in the evening, you, we use it. So our idea is really to be flexible in a way, so if somebody don't wants to join one period, one um, practice session, no problem. Um, the only break where we really have is uh, Wednesday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. Therefore, we use the, the center for, let's say, for our sp school activities. We have approximately 35 schools we are working here in our region with uh, to see where we are joining even the school lessons, sport lessons inside it and um, in this afternoons Wednesday and Saturday afternoon we invite the kids who are really interesting for us in our center where we can continue our work so this is where we where the capacity is reached this is where Andreas don't have so much trouble uh, because our capacity is at one stage is, is reached I have no bigger place and no more tables to put in so this is, let's say, basically the, the, the way we are working in, in our um, place, at our home, as Andreas would uh, say. So that's, that's basically. Sounds very great. And uh, by the way, uh, congratulations also to this, to this great initiative with the, with the schools. Has to be mentioned, you know, also from highest importance nowadays. And yeah, now it's time for the next question, asked by Massimo. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Dominique. Great answers, great uh, explanation from our, our guests. Uh, very interesting and informative, of course, uh, as usual. And uh, we used to give, um, uh, let's say, um, relevant information uh, regarding the staff. So players, uh, we know that you have uh, strong players, champions, world-class players, but uh, uh, the, the staff also is uh, is very important to build up a good staff around them. So how how this uh, this uh, this staff work uh, uh, around the, around the players? We can start now with uh, Christian. Christian, you can uh, you can start first. Okay, we have uh, as you can see, we don't have such uh, so many players around us uh, in general, as you can imagine. If you have 10 tables inside the venue, so it's maximum 20 players. But for these 20 players, we could build up a structure uh, with around uh, five coaches, table tennis coaches, trainers, and um, one physical coach and one physiotherapist. So we speak about seven guys from the sport part who are uh, really aware of all the players inside. So seven, let's say seven coaches or Six coaches plus one physio for maximum 20 players inside the menu. And beside that, of course, you have the administrational work uh, in the back office of it. And there is a lot to do, as I already pointed out, with, for example, with the work with the school schools. And um, therefore, we have uh, approximately um, four employees full time we're working in. And so that's that's basically the structure for for and as you can see, you need around 10 people, around 20 players. So um, it's high, let's say, it's a high cost, but we want to reach also high quality. So that's basically the way we want to create it. And yeah, so I think that's, that's, the, oh, yeah. that's the coin. That's good. How about you, Andreas? Well, what kind of... Uh... Uh, staff uh, running around the, the, the center, the Borussia Dusseldorf. Um, yeah, in, in general, the, for the managing the center, uh, our own hall and all the German table center, we have around 20 employees, uh, all in all. Uh, this means people um, working in the kitchen, people cleaning, um, people open the door, closing the door, and packing every, every material like this. Um, uh, we have a own table tennis school. Uh, we are making a lot of social work with schools, with table tennis outdoor company, uh, outdoor activities, free table tennis tour, kids open, 
um, many, many things around our sport and for this all in all we have uh, 20 people working. Um, plus the players and the coach for our team um, and the German Table Tennis uh, Association has here around five, six coaches, not always being here. Oskar, for example, coming two times a week or something like this. But around the, the top players, they have four or five coaches working with them uh, in the internat, are working as far as I know. I, I don't pay them. Uh, they are paid by the German Table Tennis Association. Uh, four people uh, managing and doing homework with the, with the children and uh, one guy night there. Uh, like this, then the, the uh, for the handicapped people, the para um, association has also two coaches here taking care of, of the people. We have physiotherapists uh, and uh, for physical training, uh, one one coach. So all in all, it's more than thirty people. Okay, but all in all, it's also um, yeah for that different because also for example the the West German Table Tennis. There is also a Southwest German Table Tennis Association. They have coaches. Yeah, Martin Ostermann before he was a coach from from, from associations, and they are working with the, the, the children, and they are coming and going, but they are then paid by the West German Table Tennis Association. Yeah. I see. So it's a little bit different, but all in all, employed for the management around 20 people, and for coaches, uh, all in all, for the top sport. There is maybe another all in all, maybe 10 coaches. Very, very professional. Uh, just, a, just a quick question, a very, uh, just a flash. Uh, Andreas, what, is, uh, uh, what comes first? A good quality of players or a good quality of coaches? Which one? Um, um... When, when you see how, how was the development, it was First, I don't know what was first. There were some in history in the 80s. There were some players, but the coach was missing. Players couldn't develop. And then Mario came and he tried to develop, yeah, together with others, uh, Oscar Fetzner. Yeah. After that period, it was always the coaches, yeah, trying to de develop um, the players. And then it was growing. Yeah, um, and then it was attractive. Yeah, attractive for other players uh, coming, and then new coaches were there. I think the the problem, like I, I think in Oxenhausen, they make it great because they have a good possibility. Maybe also because they are catching some money for developing the players. Yeah, that they can have this very very high quality. Um, there you can always work. Yeah. It's easy to say. Normally, I would say I'm also coach. I'm learned like coach, and I work here like coach. The, the the coaches are more important than the players. But so it's to to organize a center. It's going hand in hand. Yeah, um, because if you have uh, yeah, yeah. a top player, because he's he's maybe bringing the money to pay the coaches. Yeah, it's a process. It's a process. Christian, Christian, players first or coaches first? Hmm. I've learned in the beginning um, <laughs> it is maybe better uh, with um, the perfect coach, with the perfect trainers, but later on you need also the very good players, players because then yeah. you teach, they teach each other, you know, it is, uh, it is learning from each other at the end. Uh, so if the players are also developing and also reaching one stage and coming back, let's say, to our place or nevertheless any other place, they are bringing also some knowledge, some experience, and yeah. and also all these small details, which uh, sometimes uh, coaches or trainers are getting, of course, in a way blind, you know, because you are doing your everyday job and you are specified on one on one part, maybe on the technical part or on the physical part, but then if you combine it and then you are coming back and the players are also growing and, and, and developing their, you know, in, on their own. So at the end, finally, it, it's a mix. But yeah, this is like you, you asked me what was first there, the egg or the, the chicken. So <laughs> it, was a, it, was, it was a tricky question. I know, I, am, I admit it. <laughs> so, Good one. Dominic, do you have any tricky question for our guests? 
<laughs> I guess it's they are used to these tricky questions. So uh, let's go over a little bit to the scheduling and planning of a season. And I would like to start now with Christian. And uh, as not all of your players um, from the Lipa Masters College, they are also, you know, competing for your club Ochsenhausen. Um, how much work is behind the, 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 the scheduling and the planning of a season of your Masters College? Oh, we have uh, only one person who is that doing really daily, um, our sport business manager, um, who is preparing also uh, before the season starts and, uh, and try to track all the schedules and plans. So it's a quite demanding process and uh, you have to be aware and to, to, to gain all the data. But I mean, all of us knows uh, how hard the schedule and the plannings are during all year long. I mean, if you can see what kind of competitions, I mean, in, in the meantime, when COVID-19 is not with us. So there is really a lot to plan and really a lot to manage and to make this position. And for us, it's really they are the, the stuff behind it's really important what they are doing every day, every single day. And that's really a big work and chapeau from my side for each of you guys who are doing that and who, who has the experience in doing that because our sport is really crazy when it comes to scheduling and planning. And it, it's not easy and it's not really, uh, it's not always fun to, to put it on a point. Not fun. And so, yeah, just to come back to your question, we have one person who is really doing that almost every day and screening it every day if everything is okay and where the people are right now, you know, when they're on the tour, if there is any competition, national competition, international competition, and so on. And we are really working with a lot of federations and associations. And of course, they have their plans and we are following, of, of course, also their plans. And then you have club competitions where our players also are joining because they are not all of our team is not uh, all of our players is not in our first team, so we they are spread really uh, across Europe, even across the world sometimes. So we have to follow them. We have to follow them and getting every day in contact with them. Thank you. And sounds like a full time plus job for your scheduling manager. <laughs> yes, okay. it is. <laughs> yeah, and uh, now over to Düsseldorf. Um, and uh, I mean, Andreas, we are all aware that also your player unbelievable traveling, you know, around the world. But in a normal, you know, COVID free time, how do you deal with the individual commitments of, of your players and their schedule? Yeah, in general, we have also one, one man who is doing the halls and this, coordinating the camps and who is when, where in the hall. Um, for the other job, we have more than one guy. We have the coaches who try to speak with the players and coordinate everything. But as Christian said, we have in the, in the past, it was crazy. And in the future, it will be disastrous case crazy. Um, because, okay, we are team and single sport. And um, it looks like that we want to develop like tennis. Um, or some want that we develop like tennis and we play every week a tournament somewhere in the world. Um, in, in this, okay, and this, this was also 10 years ago or 20 years ago, I had the same questions and we were planning at the time of Samsonov and when he was 16 and later he was 25 and European champion and everything and also had these problems where to play, in which club to play, too many matches in the club, then coordinating with, with the, the, the championships. Um, I think a planning, a real planning is very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, you, have, you have to find, um, yeah, you have to decide what to do. Uh, you have to say, okay, this is important, one, two, three, four, five, and this is not so important, and this is not so important. And uh, it's always, it could not be a conflict because uh, yeah, if you want to be Olympic champion, it can be maybe worse to play 25 Bundesliga games or 30. Travel a lot because in the airplane you cannot practice or have a competition. Um, so, so there are different approaches in this we saw. Dimitri Ofshaw has a different approach. Samsonov, we have now many who are not playing all games and leagues. They are, they are earning the money. 
everybody knows. And on the other side, they must earn the points in the uh, important tournaments. I think, um, yeah, it's it's more a planning and compromise. Yeah, um, and only some. Um, I think Dimitri Osharov he did it in a quite tough way and good way. Yeah, that he found his way um, to develop maximum. Yeah, so he, he, had, he was lucky to, to find a club only for eight or ten matches, who is um, there is earning the money for what he can do, and then he's concentrating on periods and practice and, and playing tournaments. Um, others did other ways. The Timo Boy did, did, did it the other way around. Yeah, he he learned in Bundesliga, learned a lot there and playing games game by game. And then in later period, he didn't practice so much and played more tournaments, hard tournaments. Uh, and in this tournament, he learned and developed uh, himself. There are different approaches. Um, what is interesting in this Corona time now, uh, last year, for young players, it was a chance. Uh, Dan Q, for example, or Kelberg. Um, there are also some others who really lose the time um, not traveling. They could practice, they could concentrate, practice every day, not traveling so much, not playing tournaments so much, maybe going around, going out first round. They are traveling all over the world, making one match and like this. And I, I think it, in the future, uh, it will be a big, we have now a conflict a little bit, in, in, but you know, it's behind, behind between Europe and VTP and their interests. The solution for table tennis is not creating only tournaments as much as possible. And uh, there is many, many other things in our in our sport. But because you must develop the sport, you must develop also the basis, you must develop the coaches, possibilities, the centers, and not only uh, giving money for playing great tournaments and forcing the players to play as much tournaments as possible. So it's a, in main, now I'm swimming around now, around the point, I'm not here by only hitting some, some points, it's a, a very, very complicated uh, thing. When, when, it, when I remember the 90s, uh, there were the European Championship, the World Championship, and some tournaments, and Borussia had to win the, the German Championship. And then Roscoff played zack, 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 and he could practice six, eight, ten weeks, three months before Olympic Games, for the Olympic Games. And now, in the future, maybe, we have how many tournaments, whatever, we have team competition, but we have this, 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 this. In between, they must a little bit sleep and practice and develop their game. Nearly impossible. Yeah. So I think the future, the, the big job also for VTT will be to develop a good plan. Yeah. Otherwise, you kill the sport. You must have a good plan, and the coach must have a good plan also for the competition, and you must decide because it cannot be that you play 30 tournaments and 30 matches for whatever. Uh, then you will not develop as uh, a player, and especially for Europe, it will be a big task because the, the players are not paid like Asian players from federations or from companies. They must play for clubs and, and like this to earn the money to play internationally. So many aspects running around yeah. the, the political scene. Andreas, thank you very much for your uh, personal opinion. And uh, yeah, now back to Massimo for the next question. Thank you, thank you, Dominic. Well, interesting topics uh, from uh, from Andreas, and uh, something maybe in future we can also to explore more. Eh? And uh, I want just to ask to um, Christian because before uh, starting, uh, we were talking about uh, uh, recruiting uh, uh, players. I mean, Oxenhausen is uh, is uh, it's a point of reference for a youngster, pro promising youngster, and uh, but how you how, how the process works uh, uh, in recruiting the, the the players? Okay, forget now. Forget I know it now. <laughs> Nothing can happen. But in normal normal times, so how how does that work? Uh, normally, we of course, if would there be all these kinds of events and competitions, then normally we we are preparing a scouting plan for the whole year. So and then we are sending um, to interesting um, competitions and events we are sending um, several coaches so that they can screen the competition and have a look on that try uh, to to get in touch of course with interesting guys to get in touch with uh, of course with each um, association federation with the parents maybe with the coaches and so on so we are looking 
uh, what could be interesting and then after we could screen them and or as you said scout them then we invited them to Oxenhausen for for a testing we, that's why I, I explained to you before or I mentioned before the our concept which is called step and inside the first two letters s and t it is scouting and testing so invite we invite them for a testing camp uh, with a mixture of other uh, interesting uh, guys where we can see uh, how they how they react and how they act during one week, ten days, two weeks doesn't matter. So that we can really see who these guys are as a person, as a whole person, not only because we could see he can play forehand or backhand. That's not the the question. We want to to see who who are these guys. We want maybe to work with for the next step and for the next let's say period. So this is of course now missing, but that's why I, I, I can, what we were working on the last period is really to, to have a good exchange in communication, of course, when some coaches or some associations are calling us and they tell us, okay, we have somebody really interesting here. Can you maybe invite him that you have a look on it? Or we are going to each place to have a look on, on the kids to have a better feeling and to get in touch with them. So that's basically what we are doing. We are planning it in advance. And right now we hope that we can plan it also in advance at one day again. That's Thank it. you, thank you, thank you. Uh, time flying. And uh, I think uh, Dominic, we have uh, one more question for our guest, then we can uh, check uh, the, uh, the question from our uh, attendees so back to you dominic right and uh, i will stay with christian and i kindly ask both of you which will be for sure quite very difficult task but you will manage it for sure uh, a short statement uh, to the mid-term and long-term uh, future goals and and what would you like to improve uh, in your training standards? do i start Andrea. Yes, yes, you, you start this time. I start. Okay, uh, I, I said in the beginning the keyword digitalization, and this is what we are still working on to create some processes and to keep the link to our players, nevertheless, where they are, and to create even virtual platforms where we can meet each other. And I'm not talking about uh, as now um, here this kind of. Um, software like blue jeans but we are where we're now using for for our call so this is mainly the the keyword um because we are getting more and more global this is this is the point and for that sometimes we have to go even there so it's not only to build up again here let's say uh, a second venue or anything else it's also to think in a global way to reach all the people and sometimes also to go there and to help. It means maybe I have to send one day a coach or our physio or a physical coach to one place where we can help when it's not possible that people are coming to, to our place. So we have to be more flexible. And the other part is not only the analog part, which I've now described, the other part is the digital part where we have to find tools we can use in a good way for table tennis. Of course, it will never replace to be in place, face to face, working hard, sweating, training. It will never replace that part, but how to uh, use, let's say, the time. What also Andreas mentioned, when you're traveling, you're losing a lot of time, really. Uh, it's a, a mess of time. And therefore, we have to find ways and tools where we can help our guys to develop still and not to lose time that's it thank you for sharing your your great uh, attitude and uh, future initiatives and good luck for this and what about uh, Dusseldorf, Borussia Dusseldorf and the training center very interesting to hear from from uh, Christian um yeah we what we do we need first of all we need a new Timo ball I hope uh, <laughs> I hope Timo is producing one uh, the next years uh, we will see, but we need, of course, in Germany, yeah, it's possible a new hero in the next generation will be quite tough. 
Um, what we are working for could be that we always said when we built something, it was not the last time. It was a pre-last time, so we are still building uh, on, on developing. Um, I think one step is also for the para people, because this, this sport is growing, so the importance of para table tennis is growing also. Uh, we, could, we could also develop there. Um, besides, I'm, I'm personally working on an out on a project not for high performance sport. It's developed um, with uh, like it's, I was inspired more and more in the last years also by now by outdoor table tennis. I think this is the future. Uh, we want the Düsseldorf to start a campaign now that Düsseldorf is playing table tennis, and we want to transfer it also in other big towns. Because at the stone tables, uh, there are a lot of possibilities, and we have a company, company, something like Tinder uh, in Germany. So, so uh, for for sport, yeah. So you you we meet two people meet for playing table tennis or making yoga or go jogging or playing tennis, and these apps, what we are working with them, the company are very successful, uh, and I think there could be a movement also for table tennis because. Our sport is dying. We are a dying sport, uh, to be honest. Uh, maybe not in China. Then I don't know if you can but in Europe we are dying, and we have to show ourselves up. And uh, we have to, my my thing is inspired in Corona times. We have to be visible. Yeah, we are always thinking about hall and uh, energy rubber and and and, taller and and big rubber and speed and service. Um, but we have to be visible outside and we have to catch the people from outside to bring them in the hall as spectators, as fans, as talent. I, I don't know, 40 years ago, I, or 40, maybe 50 years ago, I, I began table tennis on a stone table uh, in Croatia. I saw two people playing and then I said, wow, I want this sport. And then I, yeah, I was not a good player, but I, I was a player and still I'm, I'm in the sport. Um, so we, um, I think we need an outdoor movement. I think this also ITTF normally must grab it. They had some some start with this. Um, but a serious movement, why not do it outside? Yeah. So these are the things and that's third what I hope that yeah, that I find somebody who can help me in the future that I can that this center is living. We have now some people with me, Joe Persh and others. They are not so young like Christian. And we must also think this, that I hope that in 2040 we will still have a German table tennis in Düsseldorf um, because the time is going harder, harder to catch sponsors, it's harder to catch the government there because we are a dying sport. Thank you very much, oh. Andreas. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'm also aware of your tables out there in Düsseldorf. Good luck also for your future initiatives. And I think Massimo would like to add also a short comment. No, no, well, it, uh, um, I, I heard uh, Andreas and uh, definitely uh, we, we, have to, we have to be positive uh, in a way. We know that uh, uh, talents are there uh, all the times. And uh, so I understand the, the feeling and uh, we have to be we have to be strong, positive, and think that uh, you know the message goes outside uh, is a is a is a positive message. So <laughs> that that's the that that is the thing. So yeah, I think uh, the time is uh, uh, pretty much uh, up. But we have a couple of questions from our attendees. Uh, maybe uh, Dominic, if you want to start, maybe with uh, yeah with uh, with Sima. Yes. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, Sima Limoki, she thanks you too very much. First of all, for sharing uh, with the other countries your experience. And now I will uh, start with Christian again. Uh, apart from the technical and tactical aspects, in what areas of the sport sciences does the center, your center, operate? Uh, it's about more uh, uh, the mental part. I mean, uh, you can uh, work on the technical, but we we developed uh, a lot in the mental part, and also, of course, beside that, physical and healthcare. 
because what we could um, realize the past years, the health part, the health problems are of course there. And if you, if we speak about high professional sport, then you really have to take care about the health. So prevention and health, it's really getting more and more in detail beside all, you know, technical and, and as I mentioned, so now many times digitalization, um, there is also a big part about health and prevention. And this is what you really have to work on. And it means, uh, is it a physio, is it really a physical coach? But also in that part, um, you need really good doctors around you and guys who are taking care of how to make a real good prevention. If, thank you very much. It seems that uh, you share the same opinion like the ITDF HPD team. And we also would like to emphasize, you know, that there are much more things besides the technical and tactical aspects in table tennis. And uh, now over to Düsseldorf, Andreas. Which sport sciences are included into your operations? Um, I support the point from Christian, the, the medical support. Um, because, yeah, to be healthy, uh, we have these problems uh, with the back and Man is not man and woman are not made for standing 20, uh, 35 years down with the knees and the back uh, and always come go down and go up again every day five hours. Yeah. No nobody is made for that and we have the, the when when I compare what was 20 years before and now uh, now is really crazy what they have to do and they have really to take care otherwise it will be there will be more and more problems. Uh, additionally, for working uh, on a video platform or, or, or video assistant with high-speed cameras, uh, looking technical to details, I know that the German Table Tennis Association they they invest some money or together with uh, university to to make uh, some some surgeries about that. Good, thank you very much, Andreas, and uh, pass the mic to Massimo. Yeah, one uh, quick question. Already you touched some aspects, but uh, one question from uh, Juan Pablo Farra, uh, which is key for table tennis club uh, club uh, professionalization. Andreas, you can start. Which is the key for table tennis clubs and professionalization? Yeah, I think you have to build up. Um, you need. You need. Um, First of all, I think you need you need an own uh, what you do, like identification of for, for what you are saying yeah, in a club. What what you want in a club? In a club, you are always uh, engaged in the social community in the town or in the area. And uh, finally, it's 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 people you need to find people to find a people philosophy. Our uh, the born of our club early in the 80s when we when we started a tournament for children. And with this tournament for children, we catch the parents, and then the parents they engage themselves in the club, and the club was growing uh, up to now. Then it's it's the heart of the club. To have a professional club, I think you must also have a line. Uh, when you when you look for players, we have in sport you need identification. Uh, if you have a, if you have in a club always changing the players, it doesn't matter. It can be German players, it can be international players. But like for example now in Oxnard, they know. Calderano, I think he's born in Oxnard because he played there some years. If you are always changing, you don't know names or something like this. And that identification is people also a coach, of, of course. Uh, also to give coach um, a plan and a confidence to be to work in longer terms and not only short term. So to build up identification because in our times we are losing identity. Uh, when you see in football or in ice hockey or whatever, it's always changing, changing, changing. Yeah, but by a mention, you know, Thomas Müller is playing there. He was always there. He, he's or, or earlier another Müller or Beckenbauer like this. You need to build up identification. Good, good, good. Christian, is it uh, is it the same for you? What what is your uh... You are, uh, I don't know how many kilometers is far from uh, Borussia, Dusseldorf and Oxenhausen <laughs> from it, your it, side. It feels, <laughs> it, it feels like around the corner sometimes. <laughs> it's around because the we corner. Meet, meet, 
we meet each other so many times in different roles, but yeah. Oh. No, I can just underline uh, the words of Andreas. It always starts with people, people and their passion. With the passion, the philosophy, the driving link. So you create your own, let's say, if I would, uh, if somebody would ask me, I would say, okay, take a seat, uh, welcome some other people who you want to join with your dream and create a vision board. On that vision board, Please place all the things, how you identify with yourself and with the, the things you want to do, you want to create. And at the end, when you have your vision board with all the more, these, all these words, then you can say, aha, this is our philosophy. That's, that's us. This is what we are standing for. This is what we want to achieve, what we want to run, what we want to make and to make the things happen. So we, at the end, we speak about a clear plan and a clear strategy. We, you can compare with the, with the company, but the, the main point and the most important point are the people who are running it. And if you have this passion and the driving link, then of course you can do everything. But what you should not forget is not also don't, what you don't want to do. Is also important. You, you you should not do then everything. You should also concentrate on what you can do and what you should not do as well. But as Andreas said, and I can just yeah say it one more time, it starts with the people, with the people, with the passion. Yeah. People, people, passion, clear idea, uh, involve people in the project, uh, clear vision, yes. and then uh, things uh, will be. Uh, let's say easier and easier <laughs> so great uh dominic uh, uh, sorry yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so dominic again to you thank you very much massimo and unfortunately really the time flies you know and uh, we could have talked with you so much more and uh, unfortunately a few of our questions you know couldn't been asked, but hopefully maybe we can also, you know, have a second webinar, future webinar with, with both of you, you know. And uh, yeah, dear Andreas and dear Christian, you were real great and uh, communicative and inspiring panelists. And we, the entire ITTF HPD team, we thank you a lot for taking the time to be here today and that you shared your insights, your challenges with the centers and your experiences regarding the topic the best practices of the table tennis training centers. So thank you very much for this. Dankeschön. Thanks a lot. And you. yeah, wish you good luck for the future. See you hopefully soon again. And Andreas, see you on the fans. Anyway, I run the corner. Thank you. What, what a pleasure. Stay healthy. <laughs> thank you. And also thanks a lot to our audience for attending. And we hope our 46 ITTF HPD Table Tennis at your fingertips webinar was very interesting and helpful for you. And I'm looking forward to announce the next webinar, which will be held next week on Wednesday, the 21st of April at 2 p.m. Central European Summer Time. And a very well-known guest of our webinar series, Dr. Samuel Pullinger, will lecture travel strategies for table tennis players and we are looking forward to have an interesting interaction with him and that's all from my side for today stay safe and healthy and i kindly ask uh, massimo for his closing words so pass over yeah. to you max yeah thank you thank you dominic well first of all thank you so much andreas and christian for your time it was a unbelievable great interaction really interesting i hope uh, our attendees uh, liked uh, this uh, this uh, special session dedicated to the training center and uh, we will not have the the first and last but maybe in future we will have uh, more guests around this important uh, important topic and today we have had uh, a very good taste of how to 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 run a table tennis center like borussia Dusseldorf and uh, and uh, Oxenhausen. So thank you very much again. Hope to see you around in uh, person. Thank you all the attendees, Dominique and uh, Dora on the back. And uh, thank you so much. See you next time. Very interesting topic next Wednesday. Travel uh, 
strategies for table tennis players. Interesting now with the global uh, traveling, it's important to understand how to manage it. So thank you very much and see you soon. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Yeah, I'll see you. Bye.